check this out. When it comes to buying camera stuff, I've got a small problem. Actually, that's an understatement. I've got a big problem. I love buying camera stuff, but that's because one, it's my job, and two, it's my hobby. So it's sort of justified. However, there are five accessories when it comes to buying cameras that personally I do think are a really, really good buy and that most filmmakers should definitely consider because they really do help you take all of your video production stuff to the next level. What's good creative fam, Brandon Washington here. And in today's video, we are taking a look at my top five favorite camera accessories. Now, these are not just camera accessories that I think are good to have, but these are camera accessories that I think are necessities to have. The main reason why I picked these five accessories is because they're not just something that I recently put in my kit, but these are things that have been in my kit for a really long time, and in my opinion, have made the biggest difference. One of the biggest differences being that they are not things that I consistently upgrade. Sure, you upgrade cameras pretty often, maybe gimbals pretty often, but these these are accessories that I think that if you are someone who is either an aspiring creative like professional or if you're even just trying to create content on social media or maybe you're even trying to make your own narrative films, these are five accessories that I think that will really make a big difference in your overall creative journey. So the first accessory I want to talk about is this guy here. This is the Ninja 5. Now, I've actually done an entire video on this guy, but it seems like every couple months, this thing becomes more and more valuable. Like I said, when I bought the Ninja 5, I pretty much just bought it because I knew it was gonna be an amazing monitor. It's a great five inch monitor. It also has a recorder built into it. And that was one of the big reasons why I think this is such a great accessory. I mean, no matter what you're doing, no matter what camera you have, it's always good to have redundancy, right? So you can still be recording into your camera, still capturing at whatever resolution, frame rate, whatever that you want, but then it's always good to have an external recording going at the same time. However, this accessory continues to just keep getting better, especially now recently, since we are finding out that so many DSLR, well, not really DSLRs, more so mirrorless cameras are allowing you to have external raw recording. I mean, this thing's value is more than doubling with the fact of now, if I'm using a camera like the Panasonic S5 or even the Sony A7S III, they are allowing you to have external ProRes RAW options. It's very rare that you have a piece of gear like this where you bought it for one price for a certain amount of value, but then they just keep giving you more and more value without having to actually spend any more money. I mean, now I have a device that not only is still a great monitor, still has a great recording option, but now it's giving me the option of RAW with a lot of the cameras that I film with. Of course, I'll have links down below to all these accessories that I'm talking about, but if you are in the market for a really solid monitor that's not only gonna stand the test of time, but that's also continuously giving you more and more value, this is definitely the one I would recommend. All right, now the next item that I wanna talk to you guys about when it comes to accessories is a really solid audio kit. Now, inside this case here is actually my entire audio kit, and it's sort of a mess because I actually just finished taking it out on a job, but the accessory that I really wanna talk to you guys about is something like this. This is a lavalier kit. Now, I am personally a huge fan of lavalier mics. I think that every filmmaker should have a good set of lavalier mics, ones that you're very comfortable with, you know how they work and you know how to use them, but also because this is one of the easiest ways to get high quality audio. Now, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. These Sennheiser microphones that I recently picked up have been my dream mics for the longest, but these are not the only microphones you have to actually go with. You can pick up these Sennheisers, which in my opinion are some of the best, but before I even use these, I also use the Rode Filmmaker or the Rode Link Filmmaker kit, and these are another awesome option. Now, regardless if you wanna go with these bulky ones or the newer, smaller Rode Filmmaker lavalier mics, 
Whatever the case may be for you, I strongly recommend picking up a solid set of lavalier mics. Nothing ruins a video faster than bad audio. And you may not always be able to set up a boom mic or you may not be able to get your camera close enough to the action in order to use like a shotgun mic. But I can always say that lavalier mics can almost always be put somewhere in the scene on your talent to where you can still capture high quality audio. Now the next piece of gear that I wanna talk about kinda of dives into a little bit on the editing side front, and that is picking up really fast SSDs for editing purposes. Now, I love editing off of SSDs. However, I do know that these things are very expensive. And so hear me out very carefully. These are not things that you actually wanna store your projects on for long terms. You can definitely pick up some slower, more cheap, a little bit you know, easier to find hard drives for that. But when it comes to editing, you don't know what you're missing until you start editing off these drives. Now, some of us have massive computers with tons of internal SSD storage. And if you can edit off of that, great. But if you're like me and you don't wanna spend a lot of money on your internal SSDs, these are definitely the ways to go. Now, these are two totally different brands. This one here is from Samsung and this is their T5 drive. And I absolutely love this thing. This one is a one terabyte and I use this very regularly, especially when filming with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, because this thing here is a tank. It can record directly to this, and then I can actually edit off of it, and it is blazing fast. However, recently, I actually just picked up this guy here. This is the Lacey Rugged SSD Thunderbolt 3. Now, this thing is crazy fast and it's a little expensive, just being honest, but this thing here actually works out really well. Not only is it a great SSD drive, but it's also rugged, water resistant, drop proof, and really it just kind of gives me everything I need in one. This is typically where I'll be doing most of my editing from. Because I like to work off of a laptop and I'm always kind of on the go, for me it's really nice to have an SSD that's gonna be able to withstand all the moving, throwing this thing into a backpack and just kind of being on the go. So regardless to what type of filming you're doing, whether you're on a Blackmagic or not, if you find yourself having to edit off of an external drive, I strongly recommend you at least investing into one SSD drive because it's going to make your life that much faster and easier, especially when editing bigger projects. accessory I want to talk about is actually this guy right here. This is a monopod. Now this specific one is actually made by a company called iFootage and they call this the Cobra 2C182. Um, but this here is a fantastic piece of gear. Now, the one reason why I typically recommend monopods is because a lot of us are kind of always on the go and we're kind of moving around filming, whether we're shooting for clients or we're shooting for ourselves, and you almost always need a way to stabilize your camera. Now, tripods are great, but sometimes they can kind of get in the way, and the same with pretty much every other type of stabilizer, whether it's a gimbal or a slider. They are great, but only for their specific use cases. However, I typically find that monopods pods are the most flexible options. Now, the reason why I wanna purposely talk about this one is because this one kinda gives you the best of all those different worlds. So, for example, this one here, it actually has feet on it. So, like a tripod, you have three little feet here. And with this, you can actually have this thing sort of just stand up on its own, kind of making it work like a tripod. Now, it's not gonna be as stable as a tripod, but if you wanna be able to slap your camera on there and kind of take your hands off for a second, you can absolutely do that and still get a great shot. Now, the other thing that I like about this is it does have these really cool little clasps. So just like a tripod, you can make everything get taller. So you can see here, I can just easily kind of stretch this thing out. And I absolutely love the fact of how flexible this thing is. But one other small little thing that's really cool about this guy here is if I actually take these legs off, 
So if I put those out and then I just kind of pull down on this, I can actually slide the monopod piece out and then sort of do the same thing with the head here. And just like that, easy hi-hat situation. So you can see that now I've got this little hi-hat or what was mini tripod set up. So if you wanna get some low angle shots, you can do this. And all of this is capable with this one simple little setup. I mean, when it comes to having gear that's gonna work with you long-term and that it's very versatile, I love having a really good monopod and something like this can really help you go a long way. For the fifth and final piece of gear that I absolutely love that I have, well, this one's not as exciting, but this one is something that really has made a big difference for me, and that is my Pelican cases. Now, I have Pelican cases for everything, for my cameras, for my lenses, for my audio equipment, as I showed you guys earlier. Even for all of my lighting stuff, I like to have all of my gear packed up inside of Pelican cases. Now, the main reason why I recommend having your gear inside of Pelican cases is one, they are crazy durable. And the last thing you wanna have to do is deal with broken gear because it gets dropped while it's in the bag or it's tossed in the back of your car, in your trunk, or it's moving around in your seats. And it's nice to just have everything here nice and secure. On top of that, these things are also waterproof. So if you do get caught out in the rain, well, you know you're gonna be good. And then the last reason why I strongly recommend these guys is because once you start getting to that point where you are carrying around so much gear, it's a whole lot easier to just wheel it around than trying to strap it all to your backpack. I was definitely one of those people who were out trying to film and carry everything on my back consistently. And so it is absolutely a huge blessing to be able to just roll stuff around and save my back than trying to carry everything at one time. So there you have it guys, those are my five pieces of gear, my five camera accessories that I think will really help make a big difference in your overall filming production. Now, obviously I may have missed some things that you guys think are really, really interesting. And if I did, definitely make sure you leave those down below in the description so that way we continue to help each other out. I mean, here on this channel, it's all about helping us all to become better filmmakers and creators. And so I'd love to work with you guys and know what other topics that you guys would love for me to cover here on this channel but thank you guys so much for checking out this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace